Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this monstrosity is the Moondrop Voyager. And if you can't tell based on what I'm able to get on camera here, this is a neckband Bluetooth device from Moondrop, and it's kind of an interesting product. And well, if you recall the last time I reviewed something Moondrop that was Bluetooth, that was the Alice TWS, and well, that experience did not go very well. So you might be wondering, why am I bothering to look at another Moondrop Bluetooth device? And well, okay, the form factor in this thing was kind of interesting, but more so, like, I think what Moondrop was doing with the Alice, where they had full parametric EQ in it, is very, very powerful. And if you don't know what that means, I'll go over, I'll kind of demonstrate for you why I think this is super powerful and why I think it's something to it's worth holding on to, worth holding out hope for. And so that's why I'm taking a look here at the Voyager, because it's got the same full parametric equalizer functionality built into it, the Alice does. And I think that's pretty cool. But let's get in a little bit of ahead of ourselves. So what else can I say about this thing? It's um again, it's a neckband form factor. It is a hundred and thirty bucks, and it's a simple, you know, a simple setup. They actually are, as far as I can tell, they're selling basically this same neckband setup but with two pin connectors on it versus having uh, a built-in IM. But this with the Voyager does have a built-in pretty basic IM. It's just a single dynamic driver, I believe a 10 millimeter dynamic driver. And well, I haven't asked or really even looked into it, so maybe I shouldn't say this, but I assume it's like the same 10 millimeter that they use in a number of their IMs, like the, uh, the Moondrop LAN. And I'm a big fan of the LAN. So LAN plus PEQ, it's kind of a good recipe. So... All right, what can we say about the Voyager here? Um, I will start by talking about the physical form factor because honestly, this is my least favorite part of the Voyager. And to do this properly, I gotta, I gotta punch out and zoom out to this camera. Look, look at this thing. This is the neck band that you wear. And then you take these cables and you, you wrap them around and you, you've got them sticking in your ears like so. And you've got these little dangly bits. And well, if that's too much dangly bit, there is actually a way, sorry, I'm, screwed myself up on camera there's actually a way to shorten the dangly bits right you can kind of like pull this out let's see if i can show you there you go and it reduces the dangle but then you just get a weird loop and um yeah i gotta be honest i don't love this form factor uh it's it's interesting i guess what it does allow them to do is ostensibly put in more robust or just bigger hardware in terms of like Bluetooth hardware, right? In terms of DAC chips, I believe this is using like Cirrus Logic DAC chip, which is generally regarded as pretty good stuff. Um, and probably the Bluetooth in this device maybe is a little bit different than what was in the Alice, or at least that would be the hope. We'll talk about the functionality in a bit, but I don't know. That's the, that's the form factor. I love it or hate it. I think some people are like neckband enthusiasts, I'm not. I'll be honest, I definitely much prefer TWS form factor, but at least when you're wearing this thing around your neck, I can't even show that, they've got little magnets inside of uh, the back of these earpieces so that they hold together, but I don't know, man. This thing is just clunky, it's big, and again, if you're a, a neckband enthusiast, I apologize if I'm completely just crapping all over your favorite thing, but this form factor is not my favorite thing. Uh, the earpieces are pretty small, which is nice in terms of fit and comfort. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's a very shallow fitting I am. I guess I didn't even really do a fit demonstration. Let me try it again. Let's, um, well, well what am I doing? I'm trying to go over here. Uh, let's go back to this camera. You can take a look at what it fits like. It's, I don't know. If you've worn a Moondrop Quarks, this should fit pretty similar to that. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, and I didn't mention this yet, is that one of the things I don't like about these cables hanging down here in this form factor is it's actually really microphonic. So as I'm, if I'm wearing this thing and walking around, any movement of this thing brushing against my shirt, it's just getting transmitted directly into my ears. And this wire is maybe a little bit stiff and maybe that's contributing to it. But also most of the time with IMs, if I wear them over ear, this sort of connection with the cable to my ear reduces a lot of the microphonics, just the sound of the cable noise kind of coming through and the little rubbing and stuff like that gets dampened by my ear. But because, well, I mean, you can wear these things over ear. In fact, honestly, this is the way that I wore it most of the time, but you can see then it just kind of like suspends the neck band. Like th what is this form factor? I don't know what's going on here. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is, it do be what it do be. Um, so I will 
put that aside and then just let's just talk about the functionality on this thing. Um, in terms of Bluetooth quality, I actually had much fewer issues with this thing than I did have with the Moondrop Alice. Um, I don't know if it's, I'm just getting really good at using Moondrop Bluetooth stuff, but I honestly think that this thing was less of a problem than the Alice, which was just a mess when it came to Bluetooth. Um, the connection seemed relatively stable. The only issues I had with it was when I was going back and forth between connecting this thing to uh, my Android phone and my computer in order to like measure it, it kept wanting to reconnect back to my Android phone, even though I would like forget the, I would forget that it was connected to the, I could go in the Android device, do forget connection. Uh, and then I would try to make it connect on the laptop, but it kept trying to pair still to the Android phone. So I don't know, a small quibble. Most people probably are not going to deal with that, but that was the only complaint, honestly, that I had with the Bluetooth in this thing. I did test the Bluetooth range on this thing briefly. Look, I'm not in my normal space where I have kind of like my, my go-to standard of testing from living room to kitchen. Um, but yeah, just walking around uh, my rental here, I even went outside through a door. It seemed to hold a pretty stable connection. So I don't know, I, I, I don't think that there's really any strong issues with the Bluetooth on this device, which might be a first for me when it comes to a, a Moondrop device. So that's a good sign so far. Um, other things about the functionality, I think it is worth pulling up the app real quick here because I mentioned, and I apologize for that reflection. I, I can't do much about it, but I mentioned that this thing has parametric EQ built into it, and that is a big, big deal if you are into EQing your product. Um, and there are, right, if I go into tuning configuration, you can see that there are a bunch of preset frequency response graphs that you can take a look at, and I'll dive into the graphs in a little bit to show you what they look like. But yeah, if you're not into, you know, personalizing your, your, your sound exactly and you just kind of want someone to do it for you, you've got a lot of options here. To be honest, a lot of these sounded very, very similar to each other. There was not a lot of difference, um, but there are definitely some in here that, that, that sound different. And I haven't even tried them all, to be honest. Um, there's a lot. That's more, maybe more, maybe more than there should be. But what's more interesting to me is this option, which... I'd, I'd assume that says parametric equalizer or something like that. But what happens when you go into this is you get you get this interface. And this interface sucks, by the way, but it's super powerful if you can figure it out. So I want to kind of quickly demonstrate for you how you can figure, how you can use this thing and also how it kind of sucks. So basically what each of these rows is, it represents a filter, a parametric equalizer filter. All right, so this filter is at 32 hertz. This one's at 125 hertz. That one's at 500, 2000, 8000 hertz, right? And then the gain column dictates like whether or not you're increasing the volume of that frequency or you're decreasing the volume of that frequency. And then over here, the Q value is basically dictating like, is it a really narrow band that you're you're affecting with your EQ? Or if by saying 32, am I actually, I want to be, you know, having like a big, a big wide ranging uh, change on the frequency response that just kind of happens to be centered at 32 hertz. So that's roughly what parametric EQ does. And if you're not familiar with using it, well, let me do a little bit of a demonstration here with Squiglink. So this is the stock frequency response of the Moondrop Voyager. And you can see over here, I've got a handful of the other ones graphed out, right? So here's stock. If I pull up a VDSF reference in comparison, you can see that the, the difference really is only down here in the bass. And it's in the bass so low that like, depending on your music, you might not even hear that difference. So that's kind of what I meant by it not necessarily sounding super different. In fact, here's the ultra bass version, which like it like dips the lower mids a little bit. But again, this is also like a pretty subtle change if I'm perfectly honest. But all right, what I was talking about was the parametric EQ. So here's what to... Uh, Here's what to do. All right, if you go over to squig.link, look up the Moon Drop Voyager. And what I recommend is actually going to this version of the graph, which is called EQ Null. That is what I have. Um, I've graphed the IM with all of these EQ values set to zero so that you know what, like, what it sounds like with no equalizer applied to it at all. Um, and then from there, you can, well, first of all, I would remove these options because you can actually only have five EQ bands on this thing. And it's also worth noting that you can only have peak filters, right? Uh, and some other parametric EQ software, you can do low shelf and a high shelf. I don't 
I haven't found any way to be able to do that in the Moondrop app. And to be honest, like that's fine. Like you can get plenty good control here. But basically what this does is, all right, let's say we were talking about, you know, let's say I'm looking at this frequency response and you know how to interpret these frequency responses. You can see that this is not like an especially bassy IM. What you might want to do is increase the bass and maybe it was starting, you know, centered at around 80 hertz. Let's give it like a 10 dB bass boost with a Q value of one. And that looks awful. So let's go with like a Q value of 0.5 or something like that. Okay, this is this is way too much bass. But if you're into a lot of bass, um, I don't know, maybe this is something that you would be into. Um, but this basically just kind of gives you a good sense of how you can really sculpt the frequency response of the Voyager and make it sound any way you like. If you really are allergic to treble and you don't want a lot of treble, you know, we can go in, let's say 6,000 hertz. Um, let's do five, minus five dB of treble. And again, let's do a kind of a wide value of that of 0.5. And you can see how I've just completely nerfed the treble on this thing. And again, in this scenario, the assumption is that that's a thing that you want. I don't think that this right here is exactly what I would like my IM to sound like, but if you want your IM to sound like that, you can. In fact, I'll show you exactly what I did with my with uh, with the Voyager. Is I found a frequency or I found a, an EQ recipe that gives me this, which is ta-da, the Super Review uh, frequency response target. So yeah, you can basically get whatever you want out of the sound of this IM if you're using this parametric EQ. And I think that's actually really really cool. Um, the stock sound honestly is is pretty good. It's basically the Moondrop land with a little bit more sub bass. And again, depending on your music, because it's all kind of sub bass focused, you might not even hear that much of a difference. So it's maybe a little bit on the lean side, um, but it's not overly bright, not overly aggressive. It's just kind of a nice tame sound out of the box. Um, where I think maybe it's a little bit weak is in terms of uh, technical performance, it's fine, actually. It's not bad, but it's just, you know, it lacks a bit of incisiveness. It's not super sharp. It's not like the bass isn't like super punchy and like well-defined. I do think that the land sounds a little bit more technical than what you get here out of the Voyager. But again, with the Voyager, because it's got the PEQ built in, you can basically change up that sound. And maybe you're not going to bake in a whole lot of technical performance, but you can definitely get the tonal balance to be exactly what you're looking for. Um, anything else that I wanted to talk about? Let me just consult my notes real quick here because I think there are a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, okay. No, I think I did mention that. I did mention that. I guess the only thing I was going to mention was that it does still have kind of the obnoxious, um, moon drop, uh, the voice, the voice prompts and stuff on this thing. Like when it's connecting, it's just a little too cutesy for me. Um, and mostly when it becomes obnoxious for me is when it's like misbehaving, right? When I was having issues with it connecting between, uh, uh, when I was trying to get it to connect it to my laptop and it kept wanting to connect to my phone and it would just like, it would say that it failed, but it would say it in this like really cute and sad voice. It was just like, come on, bro, like stop it. <laughs> okay, maybe that's just a me thing. Um, but yeah, that is the Moon Drop Voyager. It's an interesting product, but I really do think that this form factor is kind of a deal breaker for me. Um, oh, that's actually the one other thing I did want to mention is that the noise floor performance on this thing is actually much improved over uh, the Alice and I think the other Bluetooth um, devices from Moondrop that I've heard. And again, I would probably attribute that to the larger hardware that they've got here in this form factor, which, okay, that's good that they're able to get that form factor and get the noise, the noise floor down, which just means that there's no background hiss or anything like that. Um, but still not really a big fan of the form factor. So out of five stars, look, I'm going to give the Voyager a solid three stars and I didn't prep my stars here for the, for the screen. So you're going to have to just trust me that it's three stars. But, uh, if you're interested in checking it out, of course, I've got it linked in the description down below. Shout out to Shenzhen audio, by the way, for sending the Voyager in for review. And while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, you liked it, please do subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell. And join me on Discord, which I've also got linked down below. Um, otherwise, I'll catch you on the next Super Review. Cheers.